So, let us now study decidability results for parametric time automata. So first, what is decidability? A decision problem is said to be decidable if we can design an algorithm that, for any input of this problem, will answer either yes or no, of course, in a finite time and with a finite memory. Some examples of uh, well-known problems, given three integers, is one of them the product of the other two. This one is trivially decidable, we can uh, do the different combinations, take first integer, multiply it by the second one, and check if it's the third one, and we do the same for 1, 3, and uh, 2, 3. So this one is trivially decidable. Given a time automaton, does there exist a run from the initial state to a given location L? This one is decidable thanks to a nice abstraction called the region automaton or zone automaton. Given a context-free grammar, does it generate all strings? This one is one of the famous undecidable problems. And finally, an important one, giving a Turing machine, will it eventually halt? And this one is also an undecidable problem. So now the question is, why should we bother with decidability? Because if a decision problem is not decidable, then it is hopeless to look for algorithms yielding exact solutions for computation problems, because that is impossible. And in particular, within synthesis, if we are interested in synthesizing parameter evaluations, if the emptiness problem, so knowing whether there is or there is no evaluation, um, for instance, reaching a state, if the emptiness problem is undecidable, then totally we are not able to synthesize all the evaluations. However, we can still design semi-algorithms. So a semi-algorithm is such that if the algorithm holds, then its result is correct, but it's not guaranteed to terminate. And we can also design an algorithm that would yield over approximations or under approximation. So this time the algorithm terminates, but maybe not with a complete result. So what are the problems we will consider for parametric time automata? The first one is the EF emptiness problem. So EF comes from CDL, it means here reachability. So it is a reachability emptiness problem. Reachability is reachability of a state. And the emptiness, be careful, is not the emptiness of the language. This is the emptiness of the set of valuations. So is the set of my parameter valuations for which a given location L reachable empty or not? This is the reachability emptiness. For instance, does there exist at least one parameter valuation for which I can get a coffee with two sugars? This is related with EF emptiness. EF universality is the opposite, opposite in terms of set of valuations. So this time I'm not asking whether the set of valuations is empty. I'm asking whether the set of valuations is universal, meaning do all my valuations allow to reach a given location? For instance, are all parameter valuations such that I may eventually get a coffee? A slightly different problem will be the preservation of the untimed language. This is linked a bit with the robustness. So as an input, we have a variation. We know a parameter evaluation. We can study the behavior of the system for uh, this evaluation. And the question is, can I find at least one other evaluation with the same untimed language? Untimed language means untimed behavior, means sets of sequences of actions. So for instance, given the valuation p1 equal to 1, p2 equals to 5, p3 equal to 8, do there exist other valuations with the same possible untimed behaviors? And finally, another problem, which is not a decision problem, but a computation problem, would be the EF synthesis. It would be to synthesize all parameter valuations for which a given location is reachable. For ex example, what are all parameter valuations such that one may eventually get a coffee? Of course, we can also do the same with uh, uh, the untimed language synthesis and so on. So a few examples for EF emptiness, for instance, does there exist at least one valuation for which I can get a coffee? Yes, this one. For the universality, are all the parameter valuations such that I may eventually get a coffee? Actually, no. This one is a counter example. I cannot get a coffee with this valuation. For the third one, there exist other valuations. I didn't input any, but trust me, there are some. And the last one, all the valuations for which we can get a coffee, this is probably the most interesting question, are all the valuations for which P3 is smaller than 8 and P3 is greater than P2. So now, what, what is the state of the literature concerning decidability for parametric time automata? For the reachability emptiness problem, 
This problem is famous to be undecidable. It was known since the seminal paper on parametric time automata, and there have been a lot of variants of this result in improving the uh, minimum number of clocks of parameters and so on necessary. The universality problem is also undecidable. This was shown last year with uh, Didier Lim and Olivier Roux. And the AF emptiness problem, so the AF emptiness problem is the unavoidability emptiness. It means, is the set of parameter valuations for which all runs eventually reach a given location empty or not? So this time limit, whatever you do, whatever the time you will wait, whatever the action you will choose, you will always eventually um, reach some location. And it's also undecidable. And the AF universality problem is do all, do all parameter valuations allow to reach a given uh, location for all runs. The preservation of the untimed language is also undecidable, was shown two years ago. And in fact, most interesting problems for parametric time automata are undecidable. So the reference here uh, is a survey on the decision problems for parametric time automata. So undecidability of EF emptiness is achieved for a single parameter. This is known both in the rational setting and in the discrete setting. However, we can retrieve decidability by reducing the number of clocks uh, of the EF emptiness problem. So for instance, for one parametric clock, so a parametric clock is a clock that is compared to a parameter, and a non-parametric clock is a clock that is never compared with parameters, but just with constants. So if we get one parametric clock and as many non-parametric clocks as we want, and as many integer valued parameters as we want, we get decidability. If we get a single parametric clock, no other clock, we can have as many rational valued parameters as we want, and it is decidable. If we get two parametric clocks and a single integer valued parameter and no other clock, we get also decidability. Then there are a list of open cases that I didn't list here. Let us move now to lower bound upper bound parametric time automata. Since the general framework of parametric time automata is highly undecidable, there have been some syntactic restrictions on the use of parameters to get back to decidability. So an LUPTA is a parametric time automaton in which each parameter P is either an upper bound parameter, meaning it's always compared to a clock as an upper bound, like here, so P, P4 is an upper bound of Y, or it is always a lower bound, so it's always compared to a clock as a lower bound. Here P1 is smaller than X, so it's a lower bound. So this PTA is a LUPTA with two lower bound parameters, P1 and P3, and two upper bound parameters, P2 and P4. The good news is that the EF emptiness problem, so the reachability emptiness problem, is decidable for LUPTA. It was shown uh, 15 years ago. The universality problem, so do all parameter valuations allow to reach a given location, is also decidable. And the finiteness problem, so is the set of parameter valuations for integer parameter valuations, allowing to reach a given location, finite or not, this is decidable again. However, more recent results have been shown that LUPT are not as uh, interesting as initially thought because the EF emptiness problem, so the unavoidability emptiness, is undecidable. The AF universality problem is also undecidable, although uh, for some subclasses, if we bound the uh, parameter domain with closed bounds, we get decidability. And finally, the language preservation problem is also undecidable for LUPTA. The question is, are LUPTA still interesting from a syntactic point of view? So can we syntactically use an equality in a guard or an invariant of an LUPTA? The answer is yes, as long as we don't use parameters. Because if we use an equality x equals to p in a guard or an invariant, then of course it is not, because p would be both belonging to the set of upper bound parameters and to the set of lower bound parameters. But in fact, the class of LUPTA is fairly large. Any model with parametric delays given in the form of intervals, for instance, a delay would be between p min and p max, would translate into an LUPTA. Many communication protocols fall into the class of LUPTA. And finally, all hardware circuit models using a bi-bonded inertial delay model will also fit into this class. And the interesting uh, thing is that in the, in the seminal paper on parametric time automata, 
by Allure and the courses. All the examples that were shown were actually LUPTA, although this uh, class was not exhibited yet. As a conclusion, most interesting problems are undecidable for parametric time automata, but we can get decidability either by bounding the number of clocks or adding restrictions on the use of parameters. And in the next session, we will discuss parameter synthesis algorithms. <laughs>